All this stuff I think is live. I'm going to go live here. I had to click the buttons, do the things on the screen. Uh, I'll tell you the rest later, Joel. Cool. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Stephen. These are the men. We do this little thing where we hold on on Bible study. And here we go. Ask not what Almighty God can do for you. Ask not what you can do for your country. Now the trumpet summons us again. Where the strong are summoned to give service, summoned to bear arms, all this will be finished, the final success of Syria, asking his blessing, and let us never fear the command to undo the heavy burden, and let the oppressed go free. Let us begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to send this back to Matt. Uh, we are live. We are going to touch on something. Oh, look. That's why it's not focusing. Look, my camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. Now we're back. We're going to touch on something tonight that a lot of people, um, this might be one of the most controversial things we discuss for one primary reason, is that if, if the religious elite got it wrong the first time there's a good chance the religious people of christianity will get it wrong a second time sorry that's i i I don't want to be the one to say this is absolutely going to happen this way what i'm going to say is we have a biblical precedence we read the bible we're christ followers we have a biblical precedence that there's a very 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 strong chance all the things that we know of god all the things we know of the word we can get it wrong and there have been people all throughout the centuries who've, in fact, you know, gotten this, you know, gotten us to a certain point. But their their main purpose has been like we all are. We want to be used by God. We want to seek God's face, His voice, His presence in our lives. We want to be of such a condition that we are here for whatever, whatever it is that God wants us to do. Love what God loves, hate what God hates. And I got TikTok camera ro- rolling simultaneously. So at some point, TikTok, they're going to bump me off. You're going to have to go over to YouTube. I want to give the thesis, though. Galatians 6 gives us this verse, and then there's more within within this passage that, that we're going to explore in, in the whole Bible. But there is this statement that says, the Israel of God. And by all accounts, we know that when God joins something together, say, same thing, let's say, for a marriage, right? When God joins something together, let he says, let no man separate it. The Jews... And the Gentiles have been joined in the man of Christ. It's where we are. And we we are still separated in the same way that there are many Christ followers who call themselves Christians who are in fact not Christians. Sorry, it, the Bible is clear, clear as day. We have parables where Jesus tries to explain the importance of understanding. Listen, the reason why this whole idea of once saved, always saved is such a, 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 a this, this, this vessel of BS is because that's what people want. The spiritual condition of most Christians is that they don't know how to handle themselves. They don't strive or endeavor to become the strongest person that God intended them to be. And so the word of God speaks to people in our current condition, but it speaks to our potential. Our potential isn't just us. It's not self God. That's what new age is. That's what these other things are. But here's what happens when the Pharisees and Sadducees got together. And, and Pontius Pilate came to them. Jesus disrupted their spiritual authority. He disrupted their, their political authority. And when Jesus comes a second time, he's going to disrupt the political authority of the world's elite. Why? Because they're taking counsel together. They're joining together against the Lord and his anointed. And part of this deception is heavy. And it's, it's deception because the Bible calls it a deception. And it requires spiritual maturity. And so if you're watching tonight, in in the deepest part of my heart, I want you to know that just because someone says you're hurting their feelings doesn't mean you're actually hurting their feelings. Doesn't mean that you're actually doing something wrong. Sometimes your truth, your understanding of biblical truth actually might go in the face of what someone wants to do. When we were lost and drenched in sin and our own selfish pursuits and desires, guess what? We were at enmity to God. 
And so any speaking of a biblical discipline and perspective was against and adverse to what we wanted to do and how we wanted to live life. And so to the best of my ability, we have a bunch of comments. The idea is we need to look at the word of God and mature. We need to look at the word of God and have discussions at a very high and serious nature. And so if you're watching on TikTok, they're going to boot me off within a matter of moments. I think there's already like two strikes. That's just wild. And the, the thesis of tonight is that there's an Israel of God. There is a geographic Israel. There are a people in the word of God as New Testament unfolds, right? We are in the New Testament times, right? It's after the New Testament was written, but we're continuing on in the book of Acts. The New Testament church is what we are, what we are this kingdom age church. We are the Israel of God. How is that possible? Why does the word call us that? Why is it the pastors are trying to simplify it and then oversimplify it? It's because it requires of them a spiritual maturity that a lot of these guys have, but when it comes to it, it's like they're not able to go and have the actual the hard discussions. And the hard discussions are this. Okay, so the Bible tells us when we are out of faith, when we don't accept Christ as Lord and Savior, we are at enmity to God. And the Jewish people lost all tracks and traces of their lineage around 130, I think it was A.D., there was an emperor that came in and destroyed the historical archives. There was a massive archive that gave from like, I forgot what it was, where there's like mother by mother that, that went down and just gave the whole lineage. And so everyone knew who's who in the zoo. We don't have that. I don't care about history to the point that I debate it. There's no point in debating history. There's no point in saying, oh, well, you know, it's the Khazars and it's the this. And the, it's, there's no point. The Bible gives us the most simple perspective that requires a mature, disciplined response. There are people who call themselves Jews that are not Jews. It's, it's, there's a period at the end of that. And yet everyone says, oh, we don't know. But what does the Bible say? Seek God. Seek understanding. Get wisdom. Get understanding. And understanding requires that we tackle some heavy subject matter. And so the, the thesis of this whole thing is that this, this evening's study is going to require that we talk these things out because we're all carrying around different perspectives. It's healthy to carry around different perspectives. If you're on TikTok, please go to YouTube. It's TikTok's going to shut down any second. I don't want to, you know, belager this. I'm going to read two passages that I'll kick us off. I want to open it for discussion and then keep driving at the passage of the word. I also had a, a good conversation with Charlie Courtney, who's on, and he, I think he's still in a township meeting. And so at some point he's going to surface and give us his input. But I, I want to read these two passages and just to understand, you know, where we're coming from and, and why we're coming at it from this angle. Um, first, <laughs> Joel Zocco, can you pray us in tonight? I'll put you on the spot. You're muted. Oh, he's muted? I'm going to unmute him. Hold on, stand by. Now you're unmuted. You're good to go. I'm, I'm new to this. Um Somebody want to want to take it? And let me let me observe how it goes. I've never done it before like this. Kyle, Kyle, praise in. Sure. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Heavenly Father, as always, good to see you this evening and throughout the day, obviously, but specifically for the purposes of the Bible study. And good evening to your Son Jesus Christ, and to your Spirit that came when Jesus departed and has been with us. And we thank you so much for that, Father. Uh, appreciate the uh, all the energy and whatnot that you have given to this group of people and everybody that's trying to push in. Um, and not only what people here here, but behind the scenes and the prayer that we try to carry out uh, as a group and, and whatnot. And um, I thank you for all that inspiration. Thank you for the stamina. Thank you for giving us the ability to continue to push forward and get done what we need to get done. Thank you for bringing the understanding, the content, the ability to speak the words, bring the words, bring the understanding as best we possibly can for what feels right, because we're not only speaking it, but we're living it ourselves. We're putting our, our not only our mouths there, but our, our walk and our, and our money, everything that we've got. So thank you for giving us that courage, that faith, and the ability to have something to believe in that's so amazing as you. We look forward to the study tonight. Thank you for all joining online. May God bless all of you, and may God bless the ability for us to get this done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. 
Amen. Gentlemen, otherwise you are muted. So if you want to just go on to your screen and unmute and then you can talk. But um, <laughs> Evan, I don't believe in replacement theory. Uh, it's, 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 listen, I, I'm going to also invite you to my perspective on this. I, I have a real hard time and difficult time with labels, with labeling a perspective. Everyone wants to, you know, bucket things like, well, what's your, you know, what's your, are you, what's your dispensationalist perspective? What is your, you know, obviously you have like the eschatological perspective on certain things or certain ones that are easy. But when we start getting to replacement theory, all right, there is an understanding that we have replaced Israel. There's scripture to back it up. There is scripture to back up. There is simply Israel and Israel exists in its perpetuity still at this moment right now. The scripture to back it up. Which scripture do you choose? And people say, well, you have to rightly divide the word. What if the Holy Spirit, surprise, surprise, speaks to each one of us individually? What if we're actually supposed to desire that the Holy Spirit speak to each one of us individually? What if we're supposed to desire that the Holy Spirit give us dreams and visions and fill us with, with, with spiritual gifts? And then we need to be walking around benefiting and edifying the body of Christ to the point at which number one piece. Oh no. To the point at which, um, you know, God wants us to be informed and then doing the work. And so because of that, right. There's this, there's this thought. Oh, Katie's even commenting, right? First, Evan Hagen's comment. I don't believe in replacement theory. And then Katie's saying it's not replacement theology. It's, it's grafted in wisdom adoption reality. Um, the branches broken off that the branches of the wild olive tree be grafted in, but yet don't boast that they have been broken off. Yeah. So I, I'll address that at a high level. And this is why I believe that if you are outside of Christ, I pray to God, you have an opportunity for salvation. I am speaking to you right now because God in his infinite wisdom chose to show me mercy instead of judgment should have been dead several times over. Praise God. I'm not. But I also don't take that mercy for granted. I can't. I just my my life has been forever changed. My life has been bought with a price. Every person that has yet to accept faith, their lives have been bought with a price that they do not yet regard. That is so disheartening. It saddens, it sickens, it angers, it confuses. Because some people you know would just their lives would be infinitely better. And I'm not saying you can't just sprinkle Jesus. And, and make everything better. But this is the other part. How many people do we have in our lives that simply speak on spiritual things in order to sprinkle Jesus here and there to feel spiritual, yet they actually don't have any spiritual understanding, which means they go along with, with the flow, they go along for the ride, and they simply believe whatever it is, whoever's on stage tells them. And you want to say bless their heart. At the same time, God is holding you accountable for the things that you press into in faith. When it says that we'll have to give an account of our lives, God will hold us accountable for the times that he, the opportunities he gave us to operate in great faith, and we chose not to. And so when I say pray for our enemies, that even the ones that we haven't met yet, is because God wants us praying for our enemies. Because listen, God's vengeance hits a hell of a lot harder than ours ever could. We think that we can pay someone back for what they've done to us and the wrong. Listen, I have been the villain in other people's story. Why would I not forgive other people? The weight of that that falls on me. And I say that because when I was a missionary to Israel and haven't obviously haven't gotten a few years to shut things down, you find out how much Christians just go and consume the religious heritage and they don't contribute into it. And just because you buy falafel and you buy trinkets from, from the Shorsham biblical bookshop in the old city, it doesn't mean that you are actually contributing back to the people of Israel. And so this passage, this idea of just blessing Israel, I pray for Israel to be blessed, the Israel of God. There's a point in my faith, in my walk, my theology, and my, my discussions with the Holy Spirit, where he's brought me to a place I can no longer just look at the conditions around me and just blindly accept what I'm told, <laughs> what I'm fed, what I am, what's marketed to me. What's what's there to entertain me? I don't I don't trust any of it anymore, right? It's it's gone from suspicion to complete. These people are malfeasant. They are intentionally working against us to go about it. 
uh, replacement th theory does not exist. Again, you guys are getting back to this replacement theory. I, I just postpone it for a second. Put it, put baby in a corner. Let's have just an honest, grown up conversation. Again, we're talking about the word of God. So here's what happens when people are talking about Jews and Jewish people. Okay. Their Ju Judaism is a religion. It's a religion. It's actually like legit. It's a religion. Then they talk about Zionism. Zionism is not a religion. Zionism is a political class of Jewish, excuse me, of Jewish people, of Jewish people who call themselves and have no reverence for God. In the same way, there are Christians who call the people who call themselves Christians and actually have no reverence for Christ. They don't even know what he said, don't know what he did, don't know what he's calling them to. And how many of us out there are, are are seeing these people and actually speak up. There's not many. And the hope is that what this starts is that we actually start having open, honest, mature conversations about what God is speaking to us, about where Christ is calling us and leading us, and how how is it we can play a role in the current situation. And from the very highest level, what this is meant to do is to open up the discourse because there is such a thing as a cultish perspective on what what like what Israel is. Israel is absolutely a geographic place. There's some people who are now saying it's not the place that, that we're told it is. Doesn't matter. Can't go back and change history. There's, there's too much there. I've walked the place myself. Walking and praying from three to six o'clock in the morning several times, it, it changes your perspective. It's ground zero for spiritual warfare. There are Jewish people. There are Israelis of that that aren't of you know Jewish religion's perspective, and and then there's the Israel of God, and we're grafted in. And so and again, at a high level, I'm going to read these two passages, and then we'll say. Uh, someone I see we have to have dialogue. Once dialogue stops, no healing can take place. Forgiveness will heal your soul. I don't know where we're going with that one. All right. Okay, I'm going to read it. So Galatians 6. Again, we're, we're going to talk about this from, from a high level. Um, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest any of you be tempted. By the way, it doesn't say you who are leaders, you who are pastors, you who are elect, you who are spiritual, guided by the Holy Spirit, restore those people in gentleness. Those that want to be restored. If someone sins, disregards, you know, God, his word, and doesn't want to be restored, or wants to be restored without the conditions of, you know, going to the process, pray on that. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. Verse 6, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches, where for students and teachers, all at the same level, we share in the same things. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And just so we're clear, if you say the Holy Spirit to a Jewish person, doesn't exist. Does not exist. They can say they'll talk to you about the Spirit, the, the Spirit of God, but is not the man of the Holy Spirit that we understand it. There's a massive disconnect. Massive. And if you try and talk to them, it's a different story. Yes, KD, you, you have a point. Comment says, spiritual things are not understood by a carnal mind. Yes, 100%. And so when we press into these things, we and Charlie and I were just talking about this. We're praying for that carnality to be surrendered and subject to the spirit. And the spirit have complete prevailing over anything that we think of or talk about. And so that's the beautiful part is that blindness is everywhere around us. Spiritual blindness is the number one condition of people that go and consume. I think it's 2 Corinthians 11. They go and consume communion, which is you know becoming one with Christ, and they do it with the wrong posture or wrong appetite. 
And it's sickness, weakness, and sleep. Those are the things, those are like curses that fall upon the people that desire the outcome of communion without really doing the internal work. And so because of this, many people are spiritually blind. And this is, this is that, again, that high level 50,000 foot pass. We are never done growing in faith, ever. Not a single time from now until we are dead. I pray to God, none of us ever stop and take our foot off the gas pedal of faith. We have to be built. It's, it's, a, it's a muscle. It has to be exercised. Why would I say this? Because God is depending on you to become the fullest potential of what he intended you to be. And that's a spirit. Because when you die, the things of this, this, the, the flesh of the world are not going to matter, right? You're, you're spiritual beings surrounded by spiritual beings calling out to a spiritual God and going to a spiritual place. And then the question becomes, how much do you think about spiritual things? And you say, well, I'm here now. I need to think about now. The Bible tells us we need to be focused on eternal, heavenly, spiritual things. Which means there is a spiritual condition about the Israeli conflict that we're in right now. There is a spiritual condition behind it. Are we even pressing into that? Or are we just taking the superficial instruction information at the top? Is that a follower of him? I don't know what's going on in the TikTok comments. Again, if you're on TikTok, please go to YouTube. It's going to get wild. TikTok in a second. I'm going to keep going. Sorry about this. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So our heart even has to be behind our actions. right? Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. <laughs> See with what large letters I've written to you with my own hand. Some people are hard of, uh, of seeing even the words right in front of them. So sometimes you need to give them big print just to help them understand. As many desire to make a, a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer the persecution for the cross of Christ which means people that love their works and esteem themselves on their works and their piety and their outward pious actions want you to be in league with them. Why? Because then it justifies their perspective and their belief. I'm going to give you a higher level. Those that say Israel is just Israel over there and we are not in fact grafted into that, that is a perspective that they want you to believe. That way it justifies their belief. Then the question is, does the Bible say something else? Does the Bible leave room for something else that could possibly, potentially, that, that we could be participating in? Why, why would the Bible do that? Because the Bible is calling us to have a spiritual understanding of the time and place and season that God's called us to. Not just human eye. We're supposed to look with spiritual perspective. We should be desiring these things. And so we continue. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. Outward perspective, you know, perception. Verse 14, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified with uh, to me and I to the world. So if we think that we can boast about what we know about Israel, what we don't know about Israel, we probably shouldn't boast. There are a lot of pastors out there who are trying to make definitive stances on what is and isn't. There are pastors out there who will give you definitive stance on many spiritual truths and biblical truths. Many things are very clear cut in the Bible. Many, many things. But when it comes to this, this is where we're, we're entering into interesting end times territory. Why? Because they're supposed to be sharp as serpents, innocent as doves. Verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but are a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, we're a new creation in Christ. Those that accept Christ, we're a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. As many of those people that are in Christ, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. Just talking about the greater body at large. Yes, Katie, you're correct. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the honor of kings to reveal a matter. And so tonight, we're going to go down a path where we are not going to tell you definitively what is and isn't. We need to give you insight and biblical perspective, almost data, to the point that you need to mature your, your perspective on things all underneath this umbrella of this. No matter what happens 
halfway around the world in the Middle East, you should never lose sight of who you are to God and the mission that he's called you to. And unfortunately, the, the risk that many Christians run is the moment that they see red heifers and they see you know nations gathering around Israel, they think at some point we're going to get zapped up. If they got it wrong the first time, we might get it wrong the second time too. And I say zapped up is in rapture. If you think about it, when the Ezekiel 38 wars play out, right? It doesn't say that America rushes to the rescue. Where's America? So if, if Ezekiel 38 is bearing upon the world and, and Israel and the nations around it, where's America? Maybe we should consider that and ponder that. Maybe that plays more of a bearing as to where we are, who we are, why we're here, the timing that God's brought us to. And I'm saying this for an amazing perspective. All of us need to serve God, right, in spirit and truth. Why is the spirit first? Because the spirit might be sending us, equipping us to impact the world around us. You're not in Israel. We can jump on a plane. We can go to Israel, but you're not in Israel. You're here. And if you're here, the hope is you are being focused and you're paying attention to like the earthly things and the heavenly things on earth that he's called you to. But some people are getting very, very, very distracted and they simply don't want to focus on things because they, it's like this ostrich syndrome. They get their head in the sand and they think like, oh, I just, I can just disengage and put things into a lower gear. That is, that is a work of the enemy. It's not a work of God. At no point does God say, take it easy, take a break. There's a Sabbath, there's a rest. That's a different story. This is not that. So God wants us to be engaged in the things of heaven. And to the best of our ability, if, if we don't take them seriously now, when are we going to do it? If all these things are going sideways on us now, when is it going to be to the point that we should actually be engaging this differently? And so I'm going to jump from that straight to Matthew, because this is, this is why you know, we talk about you know, Old Testament, New Testament, we talk about Israel, right? Our Jewish heritage. We have a religious heritage in Judaism. And then we go forward. Matthew 19, verse 4. And he answered and said to him, actually, I'll read the whole thing just from the beginning. It won't go too far. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed him and he healed them while he was there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him. And saying to him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And this is where we get into this whole idea of replacement theology. We are not Jewish people. We are Christ followers. We are grafted in, right? And there are branches. And the best part is Jesus says, right? What does God do to branches that don't bear fruit? Spiritual fruit. At a moment of God's choosing, he cuts the branches off. There's a biblical precedence where God saves his people, he, he's with them in the fire and goes to them, and he goes with them through the fire. He's with them in the storm and goes with them through the storm. He does not simply leave his people over to destruction unless they have turned away from him. And this nation has 100% from a political level to a spiritual level, we've turned away from God. And so our work is to somehow, you know, do, do an about face within our own lives and then be on display for God to put us in line and league with other people. That's the hope. It's not the reality right now. It's the hope. It's the work that we uh, you know aim towards. And so when I look at this, I look at people who are on a pulpit who are saying, you have to focus on this. You have to think about this. And this is the crazy part. You can't effectuate any change. Any pastor that wants you to think about an end times condition and start to say, we're close, we're very close. Why? It's the work at hand we're supposed to be focused on. And so through the course of this, and I know I've said it already at a high level, but we need to have a high level discussion of, wait a second, why is it people are trying to overemphasize a certain place? Because we're supposed to know the times and seasons. We're not supposed to get caught off guard. And there's a chance that many people will, in fact, get caught off guard. We are not those people. We are endeavoring to not be those people. And so from just, again, a thesis perspective, and there's people posting up comments and notes, Matthew 24 is, is also this underlying thing. 
at a high level, the very first thing Jesus warned about said, be careful that you are not deceived. If possible, even his elect will in fact be deceived. Self-deception is one of them. Pastoral deception is one of them. And just by a show of hands, so the Bible says that there will be many false teachers. Right? Corinthians says that there are, just as Satan disguised himself as an angel of light, there, there are his agents disguised as ministers of righteousness. How many of them have self-identified yet? None. So is if the Bible's true, they're going to be there. How do we know about them? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's supposed to be giving us insight and guiding and directing us. And that's that's our goal. And so to just simply take a pastor's perspective on anything right now, right? You hope to God that pastor is operating from the right spiritual footing. But you need to be on a right spiritual footing in order to rightly test every single thing against the Holy Spirit. So after Matthew 19, there's just the the odd parts of revelation that again it's everyone's trying to say what part of revelation are we in and i'm going to read it and this is not to cause confusion this is not to throw you off course but this is one of those things where like we need to be asking these high level questions right we go through the churches revelation 2 9 well i should say 2 8 and to the angel of the church in smyrna right these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. And you're like, wait a second. What what, what does that even mean? Why, why would people say that they're Jews, but they're not Jews? What would they gain and benefit by that? What, what's to gain by calling yourself something that, in fact, you're not? Let's continue. Revelation 3, 9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. The church that follows Christ. Technically, that was uh, the church of Philadelphia, right? The one that pretty much got everything right according to the letters. I want to just give you again this this high level pass i pray to god that you are reading the word of god and desiring that the holy spirit speak to you directly don't ever take my words for it i'm one speaker these guys on this bible study love them to death all of us have to be navigating this why because if a whole crowd of people is looking to the right expecting things to happen red heifers red heifers don't matter except for the fact if you like eating steak there's more steak on the table god willing why do they not matter? We're supposed to know the times and seasons. Why? For you to, to be serious about the Lord's work at hand. We are already in those times and seasons. If you need the red heifers and other signs and wonders to be more engaged in your faith, something's wrong. And what does the word say? There are many who seek a sign. Many who seek something in the heavenlies. Why? Because they're not walking with the Holy Spirit. And they're saying, God, please make it stupid simple for me. And what does that mean? You don't have a heart that's pursuing God. You have a heart and a lifestyle that's pursuing self. And you, then you sprinkle Jesus in and want Jesus to perform like, like he's like something that you'll get out of a vending machine. And then you wonder why prayer is not answered. And you wonder why family is out of faith. And you wonder why things in society and culture are going sideways. Because while God-fearing people, you know, focus on our Christianese and our Christian little bubbles, the world has gone to crap. And it's all on schedule. <laughs> yeah, they're wasting good stakes. Yeah. So at, at the highest possible level, right, we should not be thrown off whatsoever by outside conditions. We're supposed to be aware of things. And we're supposed to look at things and test everything. And here's the other part. If the body of Christ has hands and feet and limbs and arms, it means that some of us actually should be interceding and praying on behalf of Israel. My own personal perspective, all of us should be praying for Israel. Why? God, save those who can be saved, bless those who can be blessed, preserve those who can be preserved, protect women, children, and those that cannot defend themselves. Send defenders in, either angelic or human, to defend those that cannot defend themselves. I don't care what your religion is. I don't like it when good people die at the hands of evil people. I don't care. I, I don't care. I don't care what it is. Why? Because that's kind of, it's pretty much how Christ cares. Yet when Christ returns, he's going to wreak havoc on people 
in the faith and out of the faith. In the faith by saying they they say they're in the faith, but they're out. Charlie, you're chiming in. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think you know, just big picture observation, right? If you just look at what's happening worldwide, you know, college campuses across the world. Um, cities across the world, right? There's this rise of anti anti-Semitism, right? And 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 for me, right, I I can uh, I get past replacement theology pretty quickly just by observing what's happening in the world, because if if Israel, if the if the Jews were not still part of Israel, then I don't believe we'd have anti-Semitism because the devil wouldn't care about them. Um, and, but, you know, this is something that I think, I mean, it's an important question because what we do now, if you just look at what's happening, look at the, um, since October 7, the U.S. is, the Biden administration slowly has been pulling away from um, <clears throat> supporting Israel. It'll say it supports Israel, then it'll undercut Israel in negotiations behind the scenes before the UN Security Council. Um, it's 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 just a matter of time. And so the question is, okay, so the U, the U.S. administration um, ceases to support Israel. So what does that mean? Well, for me, biblically. Right, we have. Um, I believe we have a commandment to bless Israel. Right, in Genesis twelve, it says, uh, "The Lord says to Abram, you know, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great." and you shall be a blessing and i will bless those who bless you and i will curse those who curse you and so if you look at what's happening right now in the u.s the u.s administration is cursing israel um and that probably doesn't bode well uh for the nation but the u.s isn't the, the U.S. government isn't necessarily the, on, the only voice. So who is it? Who is it then that should be standing up and blessing Israel? And and that's obviously the church. Um, and you have a lot of factions where of, of uh, you know of well we don't believe Israel is Israel. Israel's not a land, or the Jews aren't Israel, or it you know I, I break it down in my mind, simply that Israel is a land. And if you believe the Bible, you have to believe that Israel is a land. And I believe that when Israel was reestablished in 1948, that that was a move of God. And God was putting his pieces in place because Israel is the apple of God's eye, Zechariah 2.8. And, and he does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And Israel continues to be the apple of his eye. Yes, we are grafted into Israel, but Israel is still the apple of God's eye. And in Revelation, he has special plans for Israel. So in his infinite mercy. Uh, so I think the question that we have, it's a, it's a completely totally relevant question today and it's becoming more relevant every day and that is what is our obligation as Christ followers um, towards Israel should we be blessing Israel and what does that blessing look like well, it's should, also, we be a, should we be a voice and it's also what we talked about earlier Charlie it's that you know, if if we realize that the environment around us is becoming entirely more spiritual and spiritually active, what if also the condition is we need to become more spiritually active in order to make room and make time to walk around and pray for the blessing of Israel and the keeping of Israel? 
and to pray for the blessing of our families. Because what, what happens is some people in the faith believe that if, if we're here, then these events are going to happen and we have to disengage. We should just be yeah. on standby notice. And that's the worst possible apostasy. That's a great falling away is that you think that Jesus is just going to come do all the heavy lifting and there's no more work for you to do. Yet again, my question is, how can you effectuate any change in Israel? You can't. What yep. happens in Israel is going to happen. Like same thing in other countries, it's going to happen. Well, what were you going to say? I mean, we, I mean, we have, I, I believe, a biblical obligation to bless Israel, right? So, because that's what the word says: if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. Even if you're looking at out your own self interest, you bless Israel, you're going to be blessed. Because why? Because that's what his word, word says. Um, and I 100% agree, right? If 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 you're thinking, well, these are just end time events. It doesn't say bless Israel, but if it's the the last days, then you can kind of just sit back and watch it unfold. You don't have to bless them. You know, you're supposed to bless Israel. And what's going to happen in Israel is going to happen in Israel. But our obligation as a church is to bless Israel. And and I and I and yeah, blessing other Christians, hundred percent. It's only a matter of time, right? Before, you know, you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's first the Saturday people, then the Sunday people, right? It's only a matter of time before that that changes. But, but, we have a commandment to bless Israel, uh, and if we don't bless Israel, then we're outside of outside of God's will. I have a question about that. So when God said that, he was talking to Abraham before there was a nation of Israel. So was he talking to the future nation of Israel? Or was he talking about Abraham? Because, you know, what that verse goes on to say, all the nations will be blessed by you. But what was it? That was Christ. Well, he talks about the land. And he talks about the people. And Israel is a land and it is a people. There are Jews and there is land called Israel. Um, and it's both. And it's no coincidence that Israel has been reformed as a nation. And after it being reformed as the nation, Jews that were scattered across the world regathered. So it is a, it is a people and it is a land. It's both. That land that's referenced in Genesis 12 becomes Israel. And that people, through Abraham, becomes Israel. And then Christians, through Christ, become Israel. So within that lies the discrepancy that a lot of people struggle with. Why is it a discrepancy? Because people in their heart understand this one statement that was was typed on here right if you love the son you love the father if you do not love the son you do not love the father so there are people out there in the world who say that they love god and they don't love jesus and then it gets even more complicated there's another word that they attribute to this of zionism and zionism even by the jews is their own perspective where there are a group of people who call themselves Jews, but yet have no religious connection whatsoever. None. They are a political group. And so someone made a comment over here, Brown Eyed Girl in Seattle on Instagram. Sorry for repeating myself. I'm Jewish and believe there's a very distinct differentiation between the land of Israel and the UN created state of Israel. The reason why this is getting so complicated is because the devil in his wisdom, and yes, we have a sophisticated, intelligent enemy. The devil in his wisdom is trying to divide us at every possible step, every single possible step. And so this question right have uh, that we have right here, you know, people have trouble blessing, you know, other people that, you know, go to war, right? Because they're not repentant. They, they don't believe in repentance. They don't believe there's anything to go to war for. I will tell you right now. What happened on October 7th was a complete abomination on every level, and here's why. All evidence points and suggests that the Jewish political parties allowed this attack to happen. 
They knew about it and they allowed it to happen. And all evidence suggests that Hamas, according to their charter that they've never changed since the 80s, wants to violently destroy every single human being that happens to occupy the land of Israel. Those two things are absolutely true. When I say absolutely, to the measure at which we have information available, right? I wasn't there. I don't know. But what I do know is that when you raise generational hatred, what do you do with that? It's going to continue. It's going to purvey. And so these things are going to build up and build up and build up and get worse and worse and worse until Christ returns. And then when Christ returns, this is my question. And this is why I like to ask questions. When Christ returns, does he save, does he arbitrarily save everyone in Israel? No. He destroys everyone who does not kiss the sun. By the time he comes back and there's no more faith that's needed, does the Bible confirm that every single person that doesn't accept him will be destroyed or subjugated? Because at some point, Satan's you know, released in a thousand years. But what I'm saying is God's grace, God, God's ways are not our ways. They're above us. And I praise God that his grace might abound because it was graceful for me. It's graceful for my family, my people. The guys on this Bible study, you guys watching, God's grace abounded. I pray that God's grace abounded. I pray, and this is where Charlie and I, you know, it's it's not so much that we deviate from it, but this is my nuance in prayer. I pray that God bless the Israel of God. Whoever God deems within that camp that he wants to use and fulfill prophecy through and to bless because he made a covenant with them, bless those people. If those people are warmongers, they'll be dealt with because that's typically how the Bible explains this out. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you're this violent person that wants to you know, carry out death and destruction, it will catch up with you at some point. But here's, a, here's, here's the idea, is that some pastors and some people say, no, you cannot put any condition on your statement of blessing and your prayer of blessing for any people. Me personally, I do. I cannot say, God, bless Bless people, I would say God show mercy on people, which it might be semantics. Your your version, someone else's version of blessing might be my version of, of just have mercy. I want mercy shown to everyone that God has a heart to reach out to and God is still working on. Why? Because their story's not done. Until, until God takes them off the chessboard or they get taken off, their story's not done. And I look at it like they have the potential of coming into faith. I pray that people come into faith. I pray that the enemy lose foot soldiers and the enemy lose resources the enemy lose his team that's persecuting and subjugating christians and it might mean that my life has to die in order for other people's faith to build up and and to come forward and step forward why dead to self christ-like god might do things that are above our pay grade that might cost us everything it costs our god everything to love us and if you're out there and you're withholding yourself saying no i would only go this far but not that far Christ is probably saying, like, it'd be a lot cooler if you did. And so in that sense, w when we have this conversation, well, I'm not telling you that you need to have prayer subject to your own interpretation of the word. I'm saying you need to hash out your prayer according to the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is telling you to pray one way, pray that way. If he's telling you to press in this way, pray this way. And if all of a sudden he sends you down a course of action where you're praying for those that can be saved and who are, in fact, the people of God and the Israel God, and then one day he has you switch course and says, just pray for Israel in general, then do that. But what's interesting is that the Bible also gives us biblical precedence where God was about to change his mind on the people, on the Hebrew people, went to Moses and said, I'm going to destroy all these people. And then Moses talked him out of it. So what if your prayer to God in blessing Israel is actually by virtue of the biblical presence that we have, it might mean that God will, will change his heart towards the, the people of Israel that can be saved, that have yet to call out to Jesus as Messiah. And I ask Jewish people this all the time. I've, I've done this to their face and it's been hilarious. First, I say, okay, so if, if Jesus wasn't the Messiah, why is the United States involved in Israel whatsoever? Because if you remove Jesus from history... There's no reason why, well, there's reason to believe that, you know, America might not be here in the current form that we're in, but there also is reason to believe 
we would never even consider Israel. You'd be a foodie stop in the Mediterranean, and we'd probably prefer going to Greece or Italy. Sorry, maybe Croatia. So then they're like, oh, but wait. So, so in other words, Jesus is this pivotal figure in human history that changed the course and actually led to the establishment of Israel. And then I say, okay, so you're awaiting the Messiah, and you think it's not Jesus. And so when he comes, I hand them three nails and say, good luck. Good luck nailing him back on the cross. Because in reality, the people that call themselves Jews or Zionists that don't, in fact, love Jesus at all, when their Messiah comes, it's our Antichrist. It's the Islamic Mahdi. And so uh, for us, for all those Christians that are saying like, yes, we love that the red heifers are here because Jesus is that much closer. Again, the re reality is there's going to be three quarters of the world's population that are going to be killed off by the time Christ returns. Are, is you and your house, are, the, are you and your house in good order, in good standing? And if so, amazing. Press into faith, ask the Holy Spirit what to pray for, and then consume yourself with the word of God and the activity of God in your specific life because you cannot stop the red heifers from being sacrificed. You Maybe Second Peter says we, we can hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. But what does that mean? Amos says it's a day of darkness and doom. Woe to those who desire the day of the Lord. Why would the Bible speak to two completely opposite ends of the spectrum? Because the Bible is speaking to a mature believer that is, that is hearing things and pressing into things of a spiritual nature, that's getting spiritual insight and wisdom, that isn't just relying on their own human convention and faculties. We have to be people of the book which means the whole book, the testimony of other people acting in great faith, and the book of Acts continuing, preferably on steroids, where we're filled with spiritual gifts and spiritual exploits. Preferably. Yeah, I think, I think if we're <clears throat> if we're starting with the word, and the word says, if you bless Israel, then you will be blessed, right? Whether it's individual or corporate or nationally. Um, then I 100% agree, right? What, what your blessing is to Israel you know, should be something that's directed by the Holy Spirit. Um, there'd be a, a desire put in your heart, whatever that is, um, that's between you and the Holy Spirit, and that's, that's your blessing. You know, maybe you have a desire in your heart to, um, uh, you know, to send money for shelters maybe you have money or uh, a desire in your heart to uh, organize churches to you know publicly support israel every time the administration opposes israel uh, or curses israel um, but w one thing that <clears throat> like when we start getting into discussions about all these distinctions and arguments and well, Israel isn't the, like, it's not the exact land that, that was, you know, form that, that previously existed. It's a little bit different now because of what the UN put together. We, we, when we start talking about all these gradations and all of these, <clears throat> these distinctions, uh, understand like that is, that has always been a tool of the devil. And if you even just look at people walking in the power of Christ and healing, right? Well, now, even though the Bible says, right, even though Jesus said, right, you will, you know, trample on serpents, right? You'll lay your hands and people will be healed. Even though he said that, and it's, it's absolute, then it's, well, let's look at it in context. And he was talking to the disciples and, and 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 healing stopped with the with the apostles and um because they really didn't need it later because they just needed it to start the church right all of these things where you have to make inferences and assumptions um and distinctions that is often where you find the devil working um and all he's trying to do is create division all he's trying to do is to hide the truth uh, because that's his only weapon. He is a deceiver. He's a liar. He can't do anything else. He has no other power. He just lies. And people believe him. Um, but but that's just, you know, my radar always goes off when we start going through, um, um, when we start cutting really fine lines 
that that isn't necessarily based on the word because the word says bless Israel, right? So our response should be that, okay, I'm going to bless Israel, Holy Spirit. Like, you know, how do you want me to bless Israel? So what are we talking about, though, the land or the people or both? Because, you know, a lot of those people don't even have genetic connections to Abraham. Okay, so, so does Israel exist as a nation? Yes. All right, it was reformed in 1948. Do you believe that was provision by God? Yes, I do, but okay. maybe not in the same way that other people do. Okay. Right. Well, so God is God reformed Israel and 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 Jews came back. I'm not saying they're all Jews, right? Certainly so much. Yeah. Of course they're not, yeah. course and, they're not. Yeah. right? Right. Right. But it is a land <clears throat> and it is a people. And those people live in that land. And so and and, and when let's just say the US said, okay. Iran, if you attack Israel, we're not gonna we're not gonna assist Israel, and we're gonna completely turn our back. I don't care whether whether you're a a, a real Jew living in Israel or you're a, a fake Jew, right? You can't distinguish. They're all in that land, and they're all gonna be in harm's way. And it is a curse upon Israel to say, "Hey, we know that we've been your ally for since." 1948 but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna part ways that is a cursing and um and make no mistake like all of this stuff that's happening with israel right now it's all it's it 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 it's all about israel and it's about our response i think as a country right the, the number one thing i'd be concerned about is if if we turn our back fully on israel then I think that's a curse to the nation. But that's that's where I don't think that's our number one concern. I think our number one concern is the fact that we have enemy combatants inside our borders. I agree because with that too. so that that's so again, what's happening right now is that the landscape is getting so fraught with this hierarchy of greater concern. And what does the devil want to do? The devil wants you to be anxious, fearful, confused. The devil wants you to stall out. Satan wants you. The, the demonic influence of the world wants you to have no hope, except except in some sort of you know, to most people, an imaginary God that that isn't making things happen yet, according to their prayers not being answered. So don't pray in faith. And so I don't consider Israel anywhere near the top of my list of things I'm concerned with. Am I aware of it? Absolutely. Do I pray for people to be blessed and kept safe? Absolutely. Do I pray for the Israel of God? Absolutely. Do I at all put this in the register of things, considering the framework and the fabric that God's having us pay attention to? Not but, at all. But, but, but Steve, just put it in context, though, right? Could it put it in context that like the entire world is beginning to come against Israel. Right. Well, well and, right. I, I look and, at and, his and, prophecies and, being fulfilled. Okay, but that, but that's but that doesn't mean right. That doesn't mean you like it's a, it's the same thing with well, we're just going to get raptured, so I'm not going to do anything. Right. We're supposed to bless Israel, so the entire world is coming against Israel. We've been we've been blessed as a nation because we've blessed Israel, and there's no question about that. So, you know, we're a nation that's falling apart at the seams. Um, mass civil unrest on numerous issues right and if we just simply turn our backs on israel i don't think that bodes well for us and i'm not saying it's a distraction because it's not because we all have to be dealing with 10 different things at the same time anyways right right what's happening in israel is frankly what what you know very well is going to happen here because of the open borders right it's the same thing. The same thing that happened on October 7th is the same thing, um, you know, that might unfold in this country. We're in the same fight. And if we just simply turn our back on Israel, on, on the apple of God's eye, we turn our back. When everybody else is turning back, like that doesn't bode well for us. It really doesn't. Like I, we, it's not a distraction. Well, let me a, ask you. Let me ask you a question. It's a distraction if you don't have the bandwidth and you haven't developed the spiritual discipline of an increased prayer life. 
It absolutely is a distraction, which I, I hate to say it. Most Christians in this country, you don't have a disciplined prayer life. You have a disciplined Netflix schedule and a DVR schedule. <laughs> That's so it's it's so again, wh when I open this up, the idea is that we're talking to a group and a, a body of believers that has to increase their faith and their spiritual understanding has to, because without that, none of this matters. We can tell you to focus on Israel, to pray for Israel, to bless. It doesn't matter if you can't even get your life in a certain place of spiritual understanding perspective that you see and you're hearing from God on a daily basis where like, again, even desiring to, you know, to prophesy was that, that you're hearing the voice of God for your life, that you're guiding your family accordingly. And for all you people out there that are saying, like, this is too hard, it's too tough, it's too, like this person's comment. So Apple, see you're saying, so bless a country created in 1948. Israel was created 3,500 years ago, roughly. Honestly. And that, that's that's the part where if, if this word is our truth, right? The Bible is our truth. Israel is not a country that was just, it was reestablished in 1948. It wasn't created. And you're going to say, like, oh, this, these people did this and these people behind that. Listen, you could say these things about our own country and our own government and our own people that we have statues of across the country. We cannot change the past. I'm going to give you a high level just past that myself and a few other, you know, conspiratorial minded individuals, because I like to have these conversations like Kyle, Kyle, Kyle and I used to have some bangers of conversations where Kyle was like, do you know about QAnon? Did you did you know this post? And then what happened? Praise God. Kyle's Kyle's out of the uh, the sandbox. I was, I looked at that sandbox and I'm like, it's not my sandbox, but praise God, other people have these perspectives and experiences and now they're across the finish line. So here's perspective. I look at it like God allowed Hitler to hear the voice. If you study military history, Hitler heard a voice that told him to invade Poland and said, you're not going to be, there's not, not going to be a counteroffensive. It's documented. His generals wanted to kill him and then he pulls it off. There's no counterattack. He kills a bunch of generals and he keeps going forward. And why? I believe that World War II was a vehicle to create the Jewish people as a victim class to the point that they're, they were given their own country. Why? Because biblical prophecy, the Bible has to come true. If the Bible doesn't come true, he's not God. And if we think that the Bible can only come true when it's on our terms, we're completely naive and, and misguided. And that's not the case at all. And so within that framework... I also look at America. I don't look at it like we are blessed. I look at it like we have a role to play leading up to end times prophecy. Are we blessed for different reasons? Yes. Israel and our decision to bless Israel in prayer is not the only reason why this nation is blessed. It's one facet of it. So I don't allow my, my spirit, the Holy Spirit in me doesn't even allow me to look at Israel like it is the source of our blessing. I look at God like he is a source of my blessing. And our adherence to live in humility and repentance to him, right? If my people called by my name would repent and change their ways, I will hear the, heal their land. We're not doing that. And I believe that that conditional promise of God actually supersedes any blessing that we might have by supporting Israel. That's my own personal perspective as I hash this out with the Holy Spirit. And again, I've been boots on the ground. I've renovated bomb shelters. I've had Shabbat dinners with families. I've gone in. I've, I've laid hands. I've prayed for kids that were on the verge of suicide because they didn't want to go in conscripted service. I'm not saying I'm awesome. Look at me. I'm saying I have invested myself in tilling the soil and touring and contributing to the, the, the greater benefit and blessing of those people. And I can tell you my spirit after being there and walking and praying my spirit is torn that there are people who call themselves Jews and are not Jews of a Zionist perspective that other Jewish people are saying they are not Jews. They're Jews by name only. And then we stall out and we think we can't have this conversation. And the problem is I'm hoping to God, God is, is causing us to have this conversation in such a way that benefits and edifies one another. And so for those people that are watching online and wondering where is this going, we have to have this discussion. And, and, and again, at the highest level, if we allow these things to stall out and stall out our faith, we have failed. We failed Christ himself. If you think that, that, that awareness of the red heifers, and listen, guys like Jack Hibbs and other people, and listen, praise God for Jack. The fact that him, you know, him and Rob stayed open in California, part of the Calvary Chapel Network that kind of disregards the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are vital to the season that we're walking into, 
they actually had a pretty cool platform where people could still go to church in defiance of a tyrannical government. I, I celebrate that all day long. But when someone tries to overemphasize and cram down this theology of this needs to be my primary focus, I have to disengage. But here's the best part. I was never really engaged to begin with. Why? Because I'm walking this out with God directly. And I pray for pastors who might be off course that God can use to bring them, you know, to give them back and put the people back in the driver's seat of their faith with the Holy Spirit. But the problem is we're surrounded by people of such a weak spiritual disposition that call themselves Christians. And then no one in your life tells you, actually, Jesus might vomit you out because you don't display the characteristics. And here's the other part. We're surrounded by people who sprinkle spiritual language of Jesus and Christianity. And that is the extent of their faith. That's it. And so when we're talking about these things, it's not to out these people or crap on people. It's to realize that our role in faith in this time and season that God's brought us to has never been more important, more vital. Our roles in, in, in championing our story with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in order to help other people champion theirs has never been more vital. And the fact that people are arguing over history in this question, listen, it's a well-intended question. Israel was not created in 1948. It's just when it was reinstated. It might have been reinstated just to fulfill biblical prophecy, which means the 70 years are up. And now we're in this weird transition of the church age into the kingdom age. And Christ is not yet here, which means transition is underway. And what are we doing with that? What are we doing with the time that God has given us? And this Israel portion, though, here's what's cool, is that we're all going to have different perspectives. I need to make sure that the onus that we process these perspectives is less head knowledge and we surrender what we know, right? I, I, I would count myself a fool for Christ and just choose to accept the things that Christ and the Word of God tell me. I can esteem myself like, oh, look at me. I've arrived. I've, I've accomplished myself. I've accomplished. I've, I've achieved this understanding and I know these things. And I try and proclaim it like this one guy on here that's trying to say like, all of Jesus's words were fulfilled in Daniel 9. And so it's done, right? They go through the Olivet Discourse and they say, he's not, he's not doing anything prophetically anymore. That's BS. But what's true? What's the one truth we can all you know, subscribe to as Christ followers? Jesus is returning. And when he is, if you do not accept him as Savior, as Messiah, as Lord, as boss, you might have a very different conversation than you think you're going to otherwise. And where is he returning? To Jerusalem. To Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. But does it say that Jerusalem is in Israeli control? Uh, it doesn't. It, it doesn't say that. I know, but it's it's in, it's it's it, he's coming to a place. He's coming to a place where Jews live. Hundred right? I mean, percent. The whole the whole Zionist thing, right? Like that's like if we you flip the tables and we were Israel, and somebody said, you know what? Like I don't, I'm not going to bless the United States because man, that that you that administration's corrupt, right? Of course, there's corruption there. Of course, there's corruption here. There's corruption everywhere. But there is a land. that the Jews have had for ever. And there are Jews there. And I just, I, I, like I said, I keep it simple. I keep it simple. And when the world starts turning its back on Israel, which is exactly what's happening now, I think there is an obligation that we bless Israel in, in, in whatever way you're led. And maybe it's just prayer or maybe it's prayer and other things, but but that's the season that we're in. And I, I just, um, I don't know. I, 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 I can't to, help. I, I get, try to keep it simple. I get stuck on the fact, why are they turning their backs on Israel? And it's 15,000 dead kids. Uh, no, no. Why are they turning their backs on Israel? I mean, that. Mostly don't, because don't, of don't, that. No. Lyman, it's spiritual. It's the I, I, same. It's the same reason we had the Holocaust. It's the same. The the the, the enemy hates Israel. Well, you've got a point. And the there. enemy yeah, hates Christians. It, it's all. The, it's all it is. But, but is, it's multi layered, right? Because like it, no, you talk about the no, fake it's Jews. not. It's not. It's not. 
It's not because it's a land and there's Jews there and God brought them back because he reestablished it. Right? That was a prophecy is, fulfilled. But this this is why, and Charlie, this is why like I understand what you're saying. And I'm again to the extent that I believe the Holy Spirit directs me, I pray for that. So if you have a position on that, how do you account for Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, that there are Jews that call themselves Jews? Okay, do you make yeah. any distinction so, for them? So, so that's, but, but I don't, I, so you're making the assumption that there's no Jews over there then? No, not at all. I'm, I'm saying there right. are Jews. So how do you, how do you, day. how do you bless, how do you bless Israel without blessing Israel? Right? How do you bless, how do you bless the United States without blessing, uh, you know, people that otherwise you wouldn't want to bless. So actually, interestingly enough, this is, and, and you guys have heard me say this. So it's probably, I don't know, however many months ago, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, let go of the America that you were born into and reach for the America that God has in store for you. Okay. But, so, but even the one that has in store for you, right? There's going to be people in there, right? You, like we, we can't do all these gradations and say, okay, well, we're just, we're just going to bless the, the real Jews in Israel, uh, those are the only ones that we're going to bless. And those are the only ones that I'm going to pray for. And maybe you can target your prayer like that. But if you're doing any blessing that's in this 3D world that we live in, um, you're going to bless I am in the whole the nation. Chat. There's, there's contagious blessing. Going... What was that? 100%. It's... 100%. Uh... It's right. You made a good point earlier. I hope I'll get our, maybe my internet won't. Uh, Matt, you're, you're totally breaking up, buddy. Ta disable the video uh, and just go to audio. It's okay, hold on. Okay. Are we better? Can you hear me? I am here. Are you there? <laughs> it's, keep talking, but it's, it's pretty choppy still. Uh, oh, man. Basically, all I was going to say is we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. Um, it's to me, you know, when, when Charlie asked, how do you bless Israel, Israel with blessing Israel? I literally pray, God, do you know who people are? Do you know who Israel is? Bless them because I can't sit here and spin my wheels. The prayers, I say blessing and that's it. I mean, it's, we've done this before, uh, the enemy loves it when we sit and spin our wheels on these little nuances and split hairs four different ways trying to figure this stuff out. We should take it to prayer. Just take it to prayer. Let the Holy Spirit guide you, guide your prayer, guide your words, guide your thoughts. You know, if you want to take some time and read about it, this is all this is all really revelating conversation, but at a certain point you just Hey, maybe I'm not meant to figure this stuff out, so I'm going to pray about it and, and move on. So Matt, I, well, that was choppy, but we got the gist of it. And and I agree, especially to one big extent. I believe that our prayer right now in covenant prayer and agreement should be that people's eyes are opened, that the veil of darkness and deception and deceit be lifted up in order for us to see who's who and where they are respectively. Why? Because... And, and Charlie, just as you say, Satan's defeated, we speak, a, a, a mature Christian speaks to the future state of that and the current existing state, the future as if it's now, because we understand how to take thoughts captive and go through the motions. But what, what younger Christians that aren't yet all the way through the woods don't understand, why are demons still able to attack me and my family? Why do I still have invasive thoughts? Why do I still have, why is there still evil? If the devil is defeated, why is there demonic influence in the world? And so we're, when, when Christians say this, that Satan's defeated, we're speaking to both the present and the future state as if it's currently within the present. We're speaking death to demonic things, and we're praying this way against demonic influence in the world and in our lives. And so until Satan is bound in chains and then released and destroyed again, Satan is the prince of the power of the air and the ruler of this world. He is defeated because we should be operating in faith in Jesus' name and prevailing over these things. But again, that takes a spiritual faith, not an intellectual faith, not a philosophical faith, not an emotional faith, 
but an actual spiritual faith. Why? Because it's without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to do these things. Like like when when Jesus references the Holy Spirit, right? The name that's given is to take hold together with against. What does the Holy Spirit do with us? He takes hold together with us against the works of the enemy, against the the activity in the world. And so Matt's correct. The prayer should be as out there as it gets. Be simplified needs to be simplified. For me, my prayer is mostly simple and my prayer can absolutely be surgical. Here's a prayer perspective. If you swing it at everything that moves air around you and you are a blunt instrument, there's a chance that God will call you a brawler, right? He, you're just a brawler. Like, But then what happens if God then wants to call you to be a champion where you are tactical, you're precise, you're specific, you are so detail-oriented in your prayer because you've seen the fruit of answered prayer with that detailed orientation. So do that. And if that means that you have to take longer to pray and get all the words out, then you'll adjust your time and your lifestyle to account for more prayer and more intercession. And it's not always going to be easy. Grunt Made Woodworks is actually jumping on a bunch of comments on Instagram. Sorry, homie. If you want your comments to be seen, we can. you have to come over to YouTube. Uh, this is why truth should be uppermost in mind while praying for guidance. Totally. And so as for me in my house, I don't want to overcomplicate things. I love to keep things simple. But yet until I have complete understanding from the Holy Spirit as to what our role is in addressing Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, here's my concern. And I'll, I'll say this. This is why the concern of Israel is the least, almost the least on my list is because if we don't address things here in this country, I listen, God has people hidden. There's a remnant here, but we have to do house cleaning. We have to prepare for everything that's here, that our own government is this whole controlled demolition perspective of this nation. And so within that, the hope is, it's a hope, it's not a guarantee. The hope is that within our change of lifestyle and the reprogramming of our mind with the word of God, we make room to pray for these things more often. Why? What about an awesome exercise for all of us to do? There's 120 people watching through the platforms plus an extra 16 on Instagram. Can't do that math right now. Um, what if all of us just took tonight when we ended up this, this Bible study or first thing in the morning, why don't we just go the next seven days and praying for Israel and say, God, show me what you want me to pray for and against. Because in my prayer walk, I pray for things and I pray against things. And then see if God, and, and, but here's the other part, end your prayer and say, God, shape my thoughts, shape my heart towards the things of Israel you want me to pay attention to, to pray for and pray against. And in doing so, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Just do that. And then you will always, again, the three parts of prayer, Father, in Jesus' name, first thing, make it, make your point, make it clear. And then justify at the end and tell God why you want him to answer that prayer. And the prayer in this case is God answer the prayer because I want to be on right standing with you. And I want to be useful for the kingdom of heaven at hand on earth. And if that means that there's a distinction, please, I'm praying for wisdom because you said if you ask for wisdom, he'll give it in abundance. And then from there, we keep going for understanding. But here's the main point of this. And this, this is it for me. I think Charlie unmuted for a second. For me is anyone that does not have reverence or fear of God, I pray that the fear of God visit them. In my own understanding that what I've come to is, you know what's going to be awesome about the fear of God when it comes to Israel is when God allows other nations to invade it and overtake it. And they might demolish it. And guess what? Even if a nuke goes off over there, what happens? There's still going to be a hill called the Mount of Olives it will still exist. Jesus will know exactly where it is. And Jesus can come down and step his foot there, even if that place is an entire ash pit. Doesn't mean he doesn't know where Jerusalem is. Doesn't mean he doesn't know where the Mount of Olives is. And so we keep thinking, oh, well, if he comes back to it, that it's in the current condition that it's in right now. I actually don't think that. Why? When you look at Daniel in the lion's den, and you see how the angels came to him and said, you know, you fasted 21 days, your prayers were answered the day that you started praying, yet I kept going. But what does the angel say? I have to leave you now. I was battling the prince of Persia. I leave you now to go battle the prince of Greece. 
the nation of Greece wasn't created for 200 years, which is the reminder that God operates outside of time. So God might refer to a, a Jerusalem that physically exists as we understand it, but guess what? God might allow it to actually fall under enemy control. God might allow Arab nations to completely overtake them and control it, and Jesus will still return on top of it. At no point is that off the table. And so all of us keep thinking, you know, God is, God is going to maintain these things. Excuse me. And if God does maintain these things, praise God. But within God, within reach of God's hand is that Jerusalem could be overtaken. It could be brought to the brink of destruction. There could be just crumbs and, and small bricks left. And Jesus can still return, and it's still Jerusalem. And so I don't pray arbitrarily because that's the condition of the season that I'm in. That's where God's brought me. And so I'm not telling you to do what I do. I'm just saying the opportunity that we have is going a season and a walk. So if any of this is confusing or, or misunderstanding, if any of this doesn't sit well, you're supposed to take it to God in prayer and say, Holy Spirit, I desire understanding. I desire wisdom. I'm going to read your word and I'm going to pray until you hone me, shape me and refine me to becoming the prayer vessel that you need me, that you need me to be in the time and place that you've called me to be here. You know, I, I let my allies be determined by uh, the standard of 1 John 2.22, right? Who is the liar but he who denies Christ? He is antichrist that denies both father and son. And what you got guys going over there with the red heifers, what are they doing? They're trying to do a sacrifice. What, in place of Christ? Okay, well, you're antichrist. So when they rebuild that third temple, who are they going to put on the throne seated in there yeah, it's the antichrist that's right i mean this is so simple and you know i i, I look at it this way I, I you know when it comes to god promising blessings to abraham i i see it it was okay him and his seed great cool um but obviously the enemy has infiltrated and, and just like throughout all history god allows the enemy to serve a role to bring it look, look at babylon right he used that to uh to discipline israel so i support the existence of israel because i know that there's real jews there i know a lot of them are not but i know there are a lot of real jews there who in the end are going to serve their prophetic purpose um but this whole idea of the red heifers and these people and what they're doing, it's obviously antichrist. So I, I have a hard time determining to what level I should support them. And I've kind of come to the point where it's like, okay, I'm hands off. God's got this. I don't need to support people who've killed 15,000 kids and who are going to try to uh, replace Christ with red heifers and, and whatever else they're going to do and putting the antichrist on the throne. That's the way I see it. <clears throat> and I have a hard time making sense comment. of anything else. There's, there's an interesting comment. I'll say this. Ali Butler, I think if we pray for Israel, God understands that though we are geographically deceived, we are praying for his vision of Israel. Ali, correct, but I would say that word. Say, God, I don't understand exactly what you want me to pray for, but I'm taking your word at truth, and I'm going to apply your word and say the words and trust that you're going to navigate it that way. God understands the heart, but at the same time, he also told us just say it, make like say the words, make it clear. Sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. No, no worries. Uh, and this is this is a great topic. A lot of lot of um, opinions on this. A lot of things revolve around this type of thought. But um, you know, one of the things, and we've talked about this before. And, and the reason I bring it up is, you know, in the New Testament, it talks about how Israel is is all those that are in spirit. And so for me, at least that's how I, I particularly look at it. You, I mean, you want to pray for everything. You, this is what we do. We pray for all things all the time, Israel included. But in, in my opinion, as far as bloodlines go, everything's off the table. Uh, and the Bible makes that clear in, in the New Testament. We can go through that again. You can go back to the, the episode. We talked about this in some detail. But that's available to everybody. doesn't matter who you are, right? Um, and I think people need to realize that. If you're not right, fix your, I mean, not to sound cliche, but kind of you want to focus on making sure you're not running afoul of disobedience. And if, you know, if you want to really truly fulfill the law, because the law is going to become a big deal in regard to 
the return of the Antichrist. Um, you, you need to understand the, the fulfillment of the law is the love of thy neighbor as thyself. And if everybody over in Israel and Palestine and everywhere else was, was actually doing that, oh my goodness, it'd be a very different situation. So if everybody then, you know, turns and starts to emulate Christ, right, in spirit, then essentially all of our problems go away because in theory, everybody's following Christ and focused on being a good person rather than all these other things. So I, I don't know. I, I think if you're in Jerusalem right now or you're in New York or you're in uh, Singapore or anywhere else, it, it's all on the table for you, spiritually speaking. And that's what you need to continue to keep in focus for yourself, because that's that's something I don't think it's, you know, that's something that can be potentially in jeopardy if you don't continue to try to work on it. Right. So focus on that and just pray for everything else in the meantime. And, you know, the good news is there's there's two things that you can have some some uh, some peace in. Right. All things will be revealed. And I think is it in two nine or three nine? It talks about how these individuals are going to come and worship at thy feet. And I will show you that I have loved you. So if you really have faith, which is what this is all about then have some faith in those two two pieces of the scripture because that's what's going to happen. So act accordingly. Jaden, what are your thoughts? You're quiet. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think that people should be focused in faith and prayer and people should be praying for both Israel and, you know, all mankind in general before, before it's too late. Um, right. I, I, I mean, I, I tell this to, to everybody. I mean, everybody listening, I tell this to all my Jewish friends when I speak to them I and mean, I talk about, I do bring up the Bible with them. And it's great. It's a great dialogue. A lot of, a lot of times it, it, it leads to bigger conversations. Um, but it's all, it, it, the thing is, it's going to apply to everyone, whether you like it or not. And that's just kind of how it, it it's, at least that's what it looks like to me. Uh, and, all, and I'm in my however many years of life here. Um, so I, you know, that's the, war, that's the real warning. That's the real, do you believe or not? Um, and it's going to come back around. So, you know, Every knee will bow. We'll, we'll get there. I would. I wouldn't sweat it too much. My my hope for this, by the way, for everyone watching, is that we have a conversation and we make a high pass, and we help you put these things back into a perspective of okay. While the world is giving us a lot of content, I'm going to remind you: none of us were ever, ever the the human body. We were never meant to receive process and filter out so much visual and audible content it was never the case 100 years ago <laughs> we were completely different people even physiologically speaking and so the reason why satan is is doing this and i believe again it's god is allowing us to be informed praise god for that we want to be informed right all of us want the information just what we do with it and just like Ali is saying here, right, Ephesians 6, 12, you know, we wrestle not. The whole point is prayer. Uh, this comment from, from Ed Zeppelin, how can all industries, including Hollywood, music industry, politics, all be run simultaneously, be run by Satanists and those that call themselves Jews? You shall know them by their fruit. I'm going to give you a little insight into World War II. The first two laws that Hitler enacted, he outlawed predatory lending, ran by, excuse me, ran by people who call themselves Jews. And then outlawed pornography because it was so debilitating to society. And Berlin was filled with brothels with all these crazy things. Also ran by the Jews. Depraved behavior was industrialized by people who call themselves, you know, Jew and yet really have no regard whatsoever for God. None. And so... Again, by no means am I an anti-Semite. By no means am I saying Hitler was right in doing what he did. Not at all. Co completely the opposite. But when you look at these things, right, it's patterns. 
And my brain can only process so many patterns. Your brains can only process so many patterns without going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And so to the best of our ability, we have to test everything, give it to God in prayer, and then move on. It's like catch and release. Like the whole thing that I want to do was have this discussion, was to give perspective, was to give the word of God, and then to understand that when, when Jesus talked about, you know, let no man separate what God has joined together. God has joined us to himself. These things are dividing us. And so at no point can anyone's perspective on Israel, on Jewish people, divide people of God. If we get angry at one another, Satan wins. If we get you know reviled at one another, Satan wins. If we start saying, you're wrong and I'm right, Satan wins. Major on the majors. This right now is a minor that unfortunately, or fortunately, the media is trying to turn into a major thing. Why? Because the media wants us focused here. Why does the media want us focused here? Because it's confusing. Because there's conflict. The media, as a told the enemy, is driving at conflict. The question is, are we going to give the enemy that much activity and runway into our lives, into our homes? Um, and and, and it, just look at it this way, right? It's like Trung's comment. Israel has done us no favors, tried to sink us, one of our ships, killing injured hundreds. Yeah, that all happened. But guess what? We still pray for our enemies. That's the beautiful part. When we pray for our enemies, right? Guess what? There are people out there in our lives who've actually prayed against us and wished ill against us, and we still pray for them. Why? Because God knows who's who and what people say in rooms that we're never in. Praise God for that. But we cannot get distracted. Our work is the work of faith. Our work is the work of spiritual gifts and exploits. Our work is the work of evangelizing where we can evangelize, casting out demons, healing the sick. And then what's going to happen? Not only are we on a collision course with biblical prophecy, and it's unfolding at a blistering pace, and it's not going to slow down anytime soon. That should not shake us. The maturity that God is calling us to is to process Amos and 2 Peter. Woe to those who desire the day of the Lord, for it is a date of darkness and gloom, and if possible, hasten the coming of the day of our Lord. I almost look at it like this. There's a throttle happening. At some point, right, we got to be careful. Don't try and just wish that we're into this thing because when it goes in, we're going to lose a lot of people really fast. And then all of a sudden, what is it? Actually, we're losing too many people too fast. Jesus, come. Jesus, come now. Jesus, come anytime, anytime, anytime you want to. That's great. Come now. Thanks. Bye-bye. I, I say this because that's the that's the work of a mature Christian is to be capable of navigating the landscape of woe to those who desire the day of the Lord. I don't ever arbitrarily say, Jesus, I just want you to come back. Why? Because there are people who want to be in faith and they're not. There are people who are angry at God and they haven't had time to reconcile. There are people who have not yet been ministered to or shown the good side of Christ followers. And they've only seen the work of corporate church and they're burned. And so I'm hoping to God that he sends people into their path to bring them across the finish line. I don't want Jesus to come prematurely. I want Jesus to come exactly at the point that we become a people worthy of his return. And if we're focused on and emphasizing other things ahead of other things, Israel is not more important than your faith. Red heifers are not more important than your faith. Iran attacking Israel or us, it's not more important than your faith. Your faith is the vital, important thing. Your walking relationship with Christ, your ability to pray through these things and become a, a you know, the, stand on the firm foundation as the world is falling apart, the love and the power and the authority of Christ in you and on you and about you is going to be the thing to bring people across the finish line. And so, yes, within within the framework of all these things, I hope to God that you are spending more time hashing out your faith and the condition of your faith and the severity and strength and durability and endurance of your faith. Matthew 24, 13, Jesus said, blessed are those that endure to the end. Not blessed are those that overemphasize another nation over yourself. Not blessed are those that get consumed on fear porn and rapture porn and, and deliverance porn. It, it didn't say that. It said, blessed are those that endure. How do you endure? Through times like this. Faith. The Holy Spirit. If you think that you're better off by consuming all this content and yet you're being disabled or debilitated and you're not the functioning full version of, of how God made you to be, you're doing this wrong. 
And the church is not going to tell you that. The church is going to tell you what the pastor wants you to understand from the pastor's perspective. That is not the church. You are the church. What happens if, let's say, hypothetical, only the, the truly righteous people get saved and raptured out? Well, naturally, you would think that's all the pastors, right? Nope. Might not be the case. But let's say there is a pastor rapture. Okay, let's say, who then? Who then leads you? It's supposed to be you. It's your faith. It's your relationship with God, with God, with Christ. It's your pressing into the Holy Spirit. You're the one that's supposed to be on display for the world to see. I'm not mad if anyone wants to consume this content. It's just if you don't have the framework and the bandwidth which to process it from a healthy perspective and then act, you know, put your faith into action and lead people, then it's useless to you. If you don't have a valve and a mechanism of prayer to pray your way through these things, then soaking in all this content is useless to you. If you don't have a way of alleviating the burden and the weight and, and the fear that Satan wants to introduce into your life, this content is there to disrupt and destroy, to steal, kill, and destroy the things of God in your life, the work of faith in your life. And so I, I, this, this, this content has been looming, and I'm praying to God it's a one and done, even though I already know there's going to be something else, right? Because like Charlie and I talked a couple of days ago, and emphasis was like, you know, the church needs to gather, get together and, and bless Israel. And yet we still have to also navigate all the other things that the church is supposed to do. The church is the body of Christ. And so the work of this ministry, if we call it that, yeah, is it's Dana Mall is saying cities on hills, right? To be, you know, a city of light in the darkness. A light in the darkness is what we're supposed to be. That can only happen with faith. It cannot happen if we are rootless trees that are swayed by current cultural, you know, and geopolitical and, and religious activity. Because I, I need to just burst everyone's bubble. We are not the center of Christendom. The United States of America is not the center of Christendom. Why do I say that? I mean, listen, we're an English-speaking, you know, Bible study group. We're the last country on earth with God-free speech and guns. That's it. Because of that, I believe we have a role to play. I believe it's a very important one. And I believe that ours, right, as having these freedoms and luxuries, even though things are becoming much more dark and violent, um, we have the ability of navigating this. So when they do stop paying the migrants and they stop giving them housing and they crash the economy and all these things happen, we will still be people worthy of a king's return. We'll have to defend violently if necessary. And of course, people are like, well, no, but God doesn't appoint us to wrath. Your version of wrath might not be my version of wrath. Your threshold for violence might not be my threshold for violence. You might think that because you can't drive to McDonald's and pump your gas whenever it's convenient, that it's too violent for you. It's too wrathful for you. I would like to speak to our ability of, as a Christ follower to adapt and improvise and overcome, to endure. So when the Bible says, blessed are those that endure, when Jesus himself, we are Christ followers, when he says, blessed are those that endure, how do we do that if not by faith? Not by might, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit, by your spirit, says the Lord, by my spirit. I'm not trying to talk at you guys. I'm just, there's a, a ton of comments. We got, I'm sure, a bunch of people over from TikTok. And if you're on TikTok, please, again, jump over to YouTube. But all of us, we're bringing this up because we're trying to give you the biblical context behind it. And yes, Charlie, you're 100% right. We should be blessing, like praying that God bless Israel. We should be praying that God bless America. The America that, you know, our, our best potential. I would, I would say that. I personally would say, let's pray that God bless the potential of all his people everywhere where he establishes them and enables them to flourish and survive and endure no matter what the climate and circumstance. And so the other part of this is, if you're not praying, you should. You should be. If this doesn't compel you to pray, I don't know what will. If you aren't inspired to take action you know, for God and against the evil in this world, I don't know what will. And we're here as an example, right? We're these weird avatars. You can say, oh, I, I'm more in line with Charlie. I'm more in line with Jaden, with Lyman, with, with Kyle, with Steve, with whoever. And it's not about that. We're here trying to show you that we are flawed, imperfect vessels that rely on Jesus Christ for everything. Jesus Christ is king. I'm not an anti-Semite. Jesus Christ is king. Still going to say it. 
Why am I saying that? Because God, you know, is the same yesterday, today, forever. Christ, our Lord, when he comes, he will be a warlord. And our Christ likeness will need to match that of a warlord. And so if you're out there thinking we just need to evangelize and the prophecies aren't 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 gonna come true, I'm sorry. Like we only have a small handful of major prophecies left. I don't believe that the eclipse was 100 percent legit. It's too much rounded. I believe we're living in an age of deception, of mass deception. I believe we are living in an age of self-deception where Christians don't think that they need to apply themselves and develop their faith. And so because of that, you know, when the Bible talks about a remnant in a small number, the Bible is a massive underdog story. I'm praying that these Bible studies help equip you to navigate the road ahead and the world ahead and to where we we offset those numbers. I'd like to have more people in the fight. Do we need them? No. We need exactly who God's going to put here on display. There's going to be some crazy stuff that starts unfolding, even more so than, than what's happened. I believe that what happened on, on April 8th was actually a massive, no joke, I think it was an actual, more time goes by, more videos come out. I think it was a massive occultic practice that they had most Americans mesmerized on. We worshipped it. Time and adoration. Time spent adoring, you know, gazing upon something. How many how many conversations focus more about the eclipse than they did about Jesus? That's between you and God. I'm just saying. Any other thoughts? Yeah, it's like an energy drain that they're doing and scaring everybody into false worship and they don't even know they're they're doing it or a part of it. Yeah, and that worship is real. And then we don't want to call it that because if we call it that, that means that, you know, at least the hope is that other people take stock in what what it is they actually do worship. And by the way, praise is when you go and, you know, you, you sing Jesus' songs and like, you know, you lift your heart out. Worship, actually, biblically speaking, it's also sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And so this 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 work that's happening right now Diane, Hitler's Assyria. In case you don't know, Isaiah 10, woe to Assyria, the rod of my staff, who had no heart for war, no mind for murder, yet I gave him one. And and Charlie, I'd like your thoughts because this is, you know, what we talked about earlier. Um, there's a biblical precedence that God will allow Israel to be on the brink of utter destruction. And unfortunately, the Bible refers to Jewish people having having hardened hearts and hardened minds towards the things of God. Because they have a, more of a heart and a mind for the things that they desire, the outcome they desire. And so God might, surprise, surprise, do something that God does, and he might go against you know, the wisdom of, of the wise and foolishness. But I say that because, like Charlie, I'll ask you, if there are only two Jews left in Israel, and there are nations invading it, and yet Jerusalem survives, can the prophecy of Jesus returning to Jerusalem still apply? Sure. So well, that, it, yeah, I don't hope for that. By the way, I don't hope for that at all. I hope that again, this happens. And so my my only last caveat thought about this whole thing is that if in fact God allows Israel to once again be militarily destroyed and otherwise taken captive, that at one point, at, at a certain point, the Israel of God is the remnant that Jesus returns to. It's the bride worthy of a Christ's return, of, of a king's return. And so my hope is that we're holding on to as much of this and the people and, and the will of God as we can. And as these people are taken off the chessboard, as lives are taken, as family members, as communities, as cities, you know, states, you know, nations are taken off the chessboard and they're consumed by enemy activity and they're consumed by the Antichrist activity, that we still focus on the work at hand, hopefully as remnant. And then that, that perspective become a generational perspective that if we have kids and grandkids and the precedence does come true where God wipes out generations and he raises up a generation that will love and revere him and do the work and praise God. And we never lose heart and never lose faith. But if we allow the outside condition to speak to our heart and our faith, we've failed. We have failed Jesus utterly. And it's not just concerning there's a biblical precedence that that happens. 
So I'm not concerned. I'm not grieved. I'm not weighed down. I would invite you all to also not be grieved, concerned, or weighed down. Manage your inputs and outputs. If it's garbage in, it's going to be garbage out. If it's noise in, it's going to be noise out. If it's burden in and you have no alleviate, you no know, a, a stress valve, prayer is going to fix that. Charlie, your thoughts? No, I mean, I, I think um, I think we all have to be careful about um, having too much um, influence by our carnal minds, right? We're, we're body, soul, and spirit. And and if we are listening to all of this stuff and processing all of this stuff from a carnal mind perspective, we're probably going to miss it. And, and if we are, um, and if you are born again, you have a new spirit, right? Your, your spirit is one with the Holy Spirit one with Christ, you have the mind of Christ. And, um, you know, we, Steve, you, you and I talked about, it. I also talked about Kyle, um, you know, this whole notion that Paul talks about renewing of the mind. Um, and, you know, the way it was taught to me, the way I had understood it was, well, you know, you put enough word in you, um, speaking it, hearing it, and over time, right, your carnal mind um, changes. Yeah. Uh, but but the Bible's clear that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. And so, no, the 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 actual renewing of your mind, your carnal mind, isn't the changing of your carnal mind. It's your ability to get into your spirit mind. It's your ability to push aside the carnal mind. When fear crops up, you push aside the carnal mind and, and, and stand on the promises of God, right? And this is how that, that's walking in the spirit where you are able to just turn off your carnal mind almost to the point where you're really thinking nothing. Amen. Uh, yeah. and, and that is, um, that is, how you walk in the fullness of Christ, that's where you get boldness because you have no fear. Um, because you're all you see are his promises, his word, his truth, and that's the only truth. And and boldness comes. So as we all process everything that's happening, just you've got to learn that distinction between your carnal mind and your spirit mind and how you turn off your carnal mind. Um, you know, if you regularly hear from the Lord, right, you are every time in your spirit mind, you're not in your carnal mind. Um, if you don't know how to turn off your call it carnal mind, just tell it to turn off, be subject to your spirit. It works your body, soul, and spirit. Um, but it's never more important than today than to be thinking through these things on that spirit mind perspective, uh, because that's where you will be able to discern, you know, all of the things that we've been talking about. That's what it comes down to. And, and, you know, the scripture is explicitly clear. If you do not have the Holy spirit, you will not be able to understand the things that we're talking about at a certain level from high to low, there will be a massive, massive disconnect of people that want to understand. They will say they understand. They will lead you and teach you and speak to you like they have Holy Spirit revelation, knowledge, and understanding. And your spirit might, in fact, go along with it. <clears throat> what does Jesus say? Many people will be deceived, if possible, even the elect. And so the only way that you can really go forward is exactly as Charlie is saying, is that you need to have this this mind, the carnal mind has to be lesser and the spiritual mind has to be greater. And you're saying, how can I do that? It's of, it's literally of laying everything at Christ's feet and saying, I, I appreciate my intellect. Thank you for all, all the things that you've done for me and you've laid things out. However, 
my knowledge is nothing if it doesn't line up with the heart of God, with the heart of Christ, and the mind of Christ. It's nothing. Surrender it. Subject it. Some very smart people out there who will say, oh, but my mind and my intellect has gotten me this far, and it's a gift from God. Yes, but yet we should count it foolishness to seize hold and reach for the things of God that he has in store for us. Why should we do that? Because to die is gain. It's the dying of self, dying to self that has to happen. And so to, to the best of our understanding, to the best of our understanding, we have to be in the world but not of it, which means in the world that God has called us to, the people that God has entrusted us to be around. Why can't we do that? Because we're still alive to self. And if we're, alive to, if we're alive to self and we pray and we reach out to God, we should not expect to even hear from God. Why? Because God's looking at like, I tried to tell you, I tried to tell you to be spiritual, not just be carnal. And so the cool part is this, a lot of us are going to have, you know, we're, we're going to minor and minor things. We're going to have our own kind of perspectives on our own different things. Like I look at it this way. There are a lot of people out there who believe that they're going to be raptured out which means I think they actually have a heart that they're not going to be here. What if God in his wisdom has already written eternity onto our hearts and their their eternity that God's written onto their heart, they already have a sense that they're not going to be here when things go kinetic and things go sideways. All that we know for certain is that, you know, let God be true in all men liars. All men which means even the people that are trying to speak into us and give us theology and give us teaching, ultimately they have to answer to God for possibly turning us sideways and, 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 and sending us, you know, in a direction other than what, other than what, uh, what God had intended. I don't want to be a false teacher. And so I cannot, and I will not tell you definitively, this is the truth that you should apply. We serve God in spirit and truth. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is paramount to everything because there's revelation knowledge, there's truth, there's healing, there's, there's, there's power and authority in the name of Jesus, but also when the Holy Spirit comes, that's the work at hand. And so in a big picture, again, the high level, as time goes forward, it doesn't matter if they're red heifers. It doesn't matter if they rebuild the temple. It doesn't matter what all these things are supposed to happen. We already know we apply ourselves to the word of God and to spiritual warfare, first in prayer and then in person. When, if it's going to be like the days of Noah, it's going to be biblical sci-fi, literally biblical sci-fi, which means every single page of this book is going to turn into where mothers are eating their children because there's no more food. The, the famine, the pestilence, all the, the worst that the Bible has to offer will be on display. And then what will they do? They hated Jesus. They will hate us. Why? Because God has a way of taking people, harpazo, taking people and preserving them through the hardship that's coming. And so that's it. There's a ton of comments. You know, we, we've gone back and forth. The scripture leads it to the fact that it is possible, even in our blessing of Israel, that the United States, as Mystery Babylon, could in fact still be destroyed. Even if we pray and we reach out to bless Israel, we could still be in line to be annihilated. And ours is the work of faith, still. If we lose our lives because they they call themselves Christians, or they, we call ourselves Christians and they hate us for it, we lose our lives. Praise God. To die is gain. I don't desire that. And the Holy Spirit might lead us very differently. So if all you door kickers and pipe hitters out there are, are looking to see like what your role is in this, it's whatever God wants. First and foremost, though, he needs your faith. He needs your heart. He needs all of us pressing in to spiritual things, to spiritual faith, not to carnal things and carnal faith. Otherwise, we're going to miss it. There's too much content. There's too much noise. There's too many perspectives. Too many people want us to major in the minors and minor in the majors. And it's not going to work. Jesus is not coming back to a denomination. He's not coming back to a four-walled church. By the time Christ returns, the Antichrist and his religion will be the religion the religion of the land of all lands everywhere and then jesus gets to go up against you know with a, with an army gets to go up against 200 million i like those odds those are biblical odds that's it we will uh yeah listen if if if, if what gets you through dana mall is having white robes in heaven do it i just want to do the work whatever the work is i don't define that work the holy spirit does god does that's it i got no other dog in this fight and so to that extent, I, I agree with Charlie on 
the idea of blessing Israel, I've done it physically. I will do so. When I pray, according to that alley person, right, I will be specific in my prayer that God specifically, surgically, bless those that should be blessed, destroy those that should be destroyed. And I pray for mercy more than judgment for myself, my family, and everyone else included. And of course, as for me, my house will serve the Lord to the best of our ability. That's it. There are a bunch of comments we're not going to get to. I'm sorry, guys. There's just there's too many. I appreciate everyone watching. I mean, there's been probably over 100 people with us for a better part of two hours. This is complicated. Our faith is not supposed to be easy. I pray to God it's like a hard-fought win that we can rise in faith and rise to the measure of the condition around us and engage our faith in a way that honors God. But that means being spiritual Christians. Not just emotion, not just having emotional faith or intellectual faith or philosophical faith, not esteeming ourselves in what we know of God and the word, but of being true, spirit-filled, Christ-loving Christians. And then showing, conveying that love however he wants us to do so. That's it. Any other thoughts? <laughs> Kyle's just smiling. What, what do you got? What do you got chambered? You got uh, something? There's, there's something chambered. No, nothing. I, like, yeah, I mean, I, I go back to when Jesus was walking to the, during the crucifixion. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So. Okay. That's the most Christ-like thing that I've said in all of tonight, by the way. Thank you, Kyle, for bringing us back. Yeah. You're a true Christian. You're a true Christian brother right there. I didn't say it. <laughs> it's repeating the man all right i'm uh again i appreciate everyone there's literally probably over 100 comments that we're not gonna get to so you know god bless you guys we'll be back with spiritual warfare daily um we're ending if, if you're on tiktok and you're watching i hope you jumped over jump jump sides because tiktok cuts me off um i'm gonna pray us out now actually charlie are you on you still there we'll pray us out sure Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your promises, Lord, that you bless those who bless Israel, Lord. And as we all contemplate, Lord, uh, Israel, Lord, as we all spend time with you, Lord, I, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us the mind of Christ, Lord, that all of the answers that we seek, whether <clears throat> whether it's an answer to the question of, of who is Israel or an answer to a question of, um, is there still healing? You know, can people still operate in the same power that you did, Jesus? Lord, we thank you that we have the mind of Christ. And within that mind of Christ, Lord, we have all spiritual knowledge. Lord, I thank you that you show us and you teach us as we spend time with you and as we know you. Lord, you show us your ways. You show us your truth. You show us your the way you move about in the earth, Lord, and, and you show us, Lord, how to how to walk in the spirit, Lord, and not be subject to our carnal minds, Lord. We thank you that you show us, Lord. All we have to do is seek it, and you will show us how to turn off our carnal minds, Lord, so that when we're spending time um, in your word, so that when we're spending time with you, when we're, we're spending time contemplating um, problems in our lives or in the world, Lord, that we tap into the mind of Christ, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you that you've given that, that to us, that that's part of your finished work. And we ask that you continue to give rev us each revelation, Lord, of, of, of your strength, your power, and the completeness of your finished work and all that that work um, provides to us, that gives us access to Lord, because we know that, that we haven't even come close to understanding everything, Lord, that is within our reach. But you will show us, Lord, the secret things belong to the Lord and to those to whom it's revealed and their children forever, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Give us hearts to pursue you. Give us hearts to seek. And we know that we'll find. In Jesus' name. Amen. Nailed it. You guys are awesome. Once again, thank you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom and good evening. Thank you for spending all this time. We're all good like that. Um, any thoughts, questions, email us in, make comments, go to YouTube, post notes, messages, all the good things. If you have uh, 
you know, we'll be back online probably tomorrow night. But everyone, there's a lot of work to do. I pray that you're pressing in. Pray that God's with you. That you know you understand He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But uh, we have work to do, all of us. That's it. God bless. God speed. And now the the outro. Oh, 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 oh